I'm excited for the season. I, Jeff, I know you're excited for the season. Maybe it, not as excited for the it, Eagles. It's but. not a pop culture reference, but I do have to. Dave and I share. Um, uh, we have different children who went to the same school. Yes. Dave, you there? Hello. Yeah. There we go. Hey, so, Dave, before we, we, we were making fun of Jason's limited understanding of pop culture, but you and I share uh, something similar, a similarity, which is our kids went, your kid went, and my kid goes to the University of Colorado. Did you yep. know of the phenomenon uh, phenomenon of, of Ralphie? Because I had no idea yeah. it was that big a deal. Yeah, there's a new Ralphie this year, right? Yeah, That's right. Yeah, I have to there's pay for a, it. Quite a fun, quite a fun uh, <laughs> yeah, you'll be paying for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dave likes to send me texts telling me how much it's costing me to send my kid to go to Colorado. <laughs> Thank it's you, Dave. It's a really Dave. beautiful setting. It's really quite a, isn't it gorgeous out there? It, it, it is beautiful, and for that price, it should be. <laughs> <laughs> Je- Jeff is definitely enjoying it with his son out there. All right, Dave, we made it. The season's going to kick off this weekend. Uh, tell me the feeling down there, uh, how excited people are to get this thing going already. Yeah, I mean, it's really exciting. It's a new era, and Nick is trying to keep everybody focused, and that's great. And You know, I think the team likes being counted out, and, um, you know, we'll find out. It's a, it's, I think the, one of the exciting things is that the fans are going to be back, and that's something that the players really, really missed last year. They, I think at times players feel like it, they take it for granted that the Fans are always going to be there, but they weren't there last year, and the performance was lousy from the football team, and the energy was terrible. And so we start a new chapter in Philadelphia Eagles history, and it should be fun on Sunday. How excited are the players to, to be playing in front? You mentioned that they're excited to be playing in front of the fans. Do you think it changes the dynamic for them? I mean, both teams have to play in front or not in front of the fans. Do you think it makes a difference? Is, is the Philadelphia fan base that big a, a, a deal to the player? They'll travel. They'll travel? Uh, yeah, I think the challenge this week will be that they're in a dome. And I'll give you an example. Jordan Mailata starts at left tackle, right? Started, what, 10 games last year? Mm-hmm. Great, right? Um, how many games did he play in front of fans? None. Zero, yeah, yeah. right. So he goes into a dome this week. It's going to be loud. They're going to use a silent cadence. And I mean, that's a challenge. But do the players go, wow, the fans are back. This is going to be so fun. No, they don't because they've got to focus on other things. So, I mean, yeah, it's great that the fans are back. I think the fans provide a lot of energy. I think this week it's a bit daunting, just the sound in the Mercedes-Benz Dome. And um, we'll see how the Eagles respond to that because they've got a left tackle who's got a lot of responsibility, very much of a blitz defense coming his way, and he's got to be on the same page with everybody else. It's not just a matter of blocking the guy in front of you. It's a matter of blocking out all the noise from the Atlanta Falcons fans who are every bit as hungry to see it turned around as the Philadelphia Eagles fans are. What are you seeing with the rest of the offensive line? Have they gelled? You know, they've tried to gel. Brandon Brooks has been limited in practice. So I think they feel like they can just plug and play him and it'll all come together with he and Lane. You know, I think that's the expectation that these, this offensive line has to be really good to, play, to fuel the offense and to give Jalen Hurts a chance. Last year it was mixed pieces everywhere, moving pieces everywhere, injuries all over, and Jalen was running for his life. Carson Wentz was running for his life. Um, I think the Eagles feel like at the line of scrimmage, this is where they win football games in 2021. This is the strength of their team on both sides of the ball. I've been really impressed with how much the veterans have bought into the coaching staff. Can you talk a little bit about uh, Coach Sirianni, Coach Gannon, and what we can expect from them? It, it kind of not much shown well, very vanilla in the preseason. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you you're, you kind of have two choices, right? You buy in or you're gone. So um, Nick's, Nick's a tremendous energy guy. He's a very unconventional definitely believes in connecting has done things that I've never seen a coach do here in terms of just creating that kind of culture, that kind of atmosphere where it's very much a let's connect, let's trust each other. Let's rely on each other. Let's be accountable for ourselves and for each other. So um, I, I, I always believe it's great. It sounds great on paper. Everything's fantastic going into the opener. When you talk about buying in, let's see how they buy in when it's when they're down 23, 21 late fourth quarter. That to me, that is when you find out leadership, you find out things, you find out how much people buy in through adversity when things are tough. Um, but certainly Nick, I, I really like Nick. I, I feel like he is the right man for the job. I love Jonathan Gannon as a defensive coordinator. I'm really excited to see what kind of scheme he puts together. Um, they're young. They've got fresh ideas, the way they approach practice, the way that they, you know, work with their players. So, you know, guys, it's, it's a new, it's a new time for the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, uh, Jeffrey Lurie described it as a transition situation back when he removed Doug Peterson as the head coach. And, I mean, I can't disagree with that. The roster has had a lot of change. 
the coaching staff has had obviously a ton of change and everybody believes now you see, you know, you know, you're going to see, it's great to buy in. Okay. But when wh- how, you're going to buy in more when you see what your coach does on game day, if he does the right things. And so this is really a huge test for everybody. What do you see of him on game day? Do you see him as I don't from, know. from, 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 I don't know yet. right. Uh, obviously we, we don't know, we can't predict the future, but from what you've seen so far about his preparation and the style that he has, do you see him as somebody who will be rigid in sticking to a game plan, or do you see him as somebody that will be able to evolve as the game goes on? Well, I certainly hope he evolves because this is going to be, I mean, particularly in weeks one and two, you know, there's just so much unknown. The Falcons have a new head coach. They've got their prize, shiny prize toy, pass receiving rookie in Kyle Pitts, just like the Eagles have Devontae Smith. And the, to me, you kind of play your base early on in the first couple of series, and then you make adjustments. And, um, yeah, he better evolve or else the Eagles are going to lose a lot of games. I mean, you have to evolve. You have to make in-game adjustments. You have to be very quick thinking. You have to be great on the fly. And so you've got a defensive coordinator who's never been a defensive coordinator. You've got a head coach who's never been a head coach. And these are tremendous challenges for both of them. Is Devontae Smith uh, adjusting to the bigger ball with the seams on it? Uh huh. Hey now, <laughs> he's gonna do um, just yeah, fine. He didn't, he didn't sit out last year. He didn't sit out. No, what the, the reference is to Jamar Chase, right? In uh, in Miami, who didn't play last year and has had a lot of trouble catching the football, and has talked about the difference in size from the collegiate football to the professional football. So, yeah, I'm I think Devontae is the real deal, and um, but it's such an unusual body. I mean, it's it's he's longer than Deshaun Jackson, but he's kind of every bit as thin. And so Deshaun's whole thing was injuries. But to me, Devontae prepares much better and conditions much better and I think is built for the long haul. I mean, I just think the kid is going to be a superstar. How do you, how do you anticipate Nick's going to be using the tight ends? Is he going to go with a lot of two tight end sets? I mean, if the other team has weaknesses in that area, yes. If the, if the defense doesn't have weaknesses in that area, no. I think it's very much a game-by-game situation. I'd like to get both Zach and Dallas to football a lot, but you know, they've got some speed at wide receiver. They've got a good running group. And then one of their young running backs, Kenneth Gainwell, is terrific, really terrific as a pass catcher. So I think it just gives you flexibility, gives you a bit of options. And I think Nick intends to use those options. But I think it really will be intended to exploit matchups. And so, like, in this game, Atlanta has – look, they don't have a ton on defense. They've got Grady Jarrett up front, excellent defensive tackle. They're going to blitz a lot. We know that. Um, and then they've got really good – um, linebackers. So maybe you don't go two wide, uh, two tight ends. Maybe you go three wide more. Maybe you, maybe you use a, a Kenneth Gainwell and you, you split him out a little bit and move him around the formation and try to create some matchups. Um, I, I, I think one of the key components here. I think the Eagles do want to run the football. I think it's not going to be a run-based offense per se, but I do think it's a, it's been a very large component of what Nick did in Indianapolis, and I think he wants to continue that here in Philadelphia. With Julio Jones gone and a new offense there, Matt Ryan coming back, but now you've got Kyle Pitts there as the new weapon, Is what do you think the approach is? Are, are you going to try and double Kyle Pitts as a rookie and take him out, kind of take it as it is? Is Do you think Gannon is somebody who goes in with a game plan to take somebody away, or what's his approach? It's, we haven't really seen any of it yet. Yeah, I, don't, I, don't, I, I really don't know, but I will tell you that. I will ask you this trivia question. What Atlanta receiver has had the most receptions in his first three years in franchise history? Calvin Ridley. His name is Calvin Ridley, right? Yeah. Not, not, not Julio Jones. So, you know, Ridley is a superstar, and um, I think he had eight 100-yard games last year. So, if you're doubling Kyle Pitts, then you better trust Darius Slay to take out, and that's almost impossible to do. I don't believe in, in, uh, I don't believe in in shutdown cornerbacks in the NFL. So, look, I, I mean, I think the I think the NFL is going to be very much what it was last last night, up and down the field, get inside the 20s. And and um, then you have to score touchdowns. And the teams that score touchdowns will win. The defenses that hold offenses to field goals will win. And but I think for the most part, the NFL teams are going to move up and down the field. I think that's just the way it is. It's a spread offense, it's a combination of college and football and professional football these days, and it's wide open. So um, the, the Falcons will get theirs. Now the advantage the Eagles have, as I see it, is they're much better at the defensive line. I mean, they should really. If it works, if it all works, they should have a big advantage. And I think that mitigates some of what Kyle Pitts and what some of their tight ends can do, Hayden Hurst, because they're just not going to be able to play five blockers against four Eagles pass rushers if those four pass rushers are winning a lot. 
Dave, we wish you all safe travels to Atlanta. Best of luck in the start of the game. Look forward to talking to you this season and hear what's going on. Good luck, man. Yeah, anytime. Please uh, please stay in touch and uh, go Birds. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. All right, guys.